Hello. Uh, this is the third part in the short lecture series on the physical principles of ultrasound. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about pulsed ultrasound. So ultrasound images are actually made up from short pulses of transmitted ultrasound. The ultrasound machine will send out a short pulse and then listen for the returning echo. As well as talking about these pulses, we'll talk about the bandwidth or the range of frequencies that are contained within the ultrasound pulses. Continuous ultrasound, which goes on sort of all the time, uh, is what we use for things like continuous wave Doppler. But for things like B mode imaging or M mode imaging, we're going to be using pulses of ultrasound. And these uh, pulses are short collections of ultrasound waves which are sent out. And the overall time of this pulsed ultrasound is known as the pulse duration. The whole point of this is that the shorter the pulse, the better the image quality. So if we use only a few cycles and we have a high frequency ultrasound, in keeping with previous lectures saying that the higher the frequency, the better the resolution, that's how we can try and get the best imaging possible in an ultrasound uh, image. So the shorter the pulse, the better the image resolution. The ultrasound pulses that are sent out are generally about three to five cycles per pulse. So based on this, we can kind of get an idea of what the pulse length is, where we can take the wavelength, times that by the number of pulses or number of cycles in that pulse, and we'll get an idea of what that pulse length is. Considering it over time rather than distance, we can say that if we were to know what the uh, period is or the time taken for one cycle, and we know the number of, uh, number of cycles in the pulse, we can then get an idea of what the pulse duration is. Now, if we would consider the, uh, the, sort of the, the pulses in their entirety, and we consider both the time to send out the pulse as well as the time to wait for the uh, received echo, we can get an idea of what the pulsed repetition frequency is, or how many times we send out that pulse per second, for example. And that's typically measured in kilohertz, or thousands of cycles per second. And thinking it in terms of pulsed repetition period, this is the time in milliseconds that it's going to be taking for that pulsed repetition frequency. So similar to the relationship between the period to the frequency uh, being inversely proportional, it's the same with the pulse repetition period in relation to the pulse repetition frequency. The duty factor is the time or the percentage of time that the uh, ultrasound is sending out a pulse. The duty factor is therefore dependent on the pulse duration divided by the entire pulse repetition period. Now typically we're dealing with the ultrasound being on for actually only a thousandth to a hundredth of the time. So it's 0.001 to 0.1 of a percent with things like Doppler. So the ultrasound is only going to be on for a fraction of the time. And the vast majority is spent listening for the returning echoes. So let's ask a question. So with increased frequency, what does this do to the spatial pulse length? to the pulse duration, and to the duty factor. Well, we're going to see that with the spatial pulse length, increased frequency is going to decrease this. Because with increased frequency, we've got a shorter wavelength. If we've got three to five, three to five cycles per pulse, with a shorter wavelength, that means we're going to shorten the spatial pulse length. In terms of the pulse duration, we know from the previous lectures that with increased frequency, we're going to reduce the period or the time for one wavelength. And again, if we say that there are three to five cycles per pulse, the whole pulse duration will be decreased with increased frequency. 
And in terms of the duty factor, remember the duty factor is the percentage of time that the ultrasound is on. If we have increased frequency, that means that we are going to reduce our pulse duration, and that means that we will reduce our pulse duration divided by the pulse repetition period. So that means that we will have a smaller duty factor. So bandwidth is an important concept because with pulsed ultrasound, we are going to be getting a range of frequencies. And bandwidth is a way to try and describe that range of frequencies. So if you have continuous ultrasound, we have a sinusoidal typed uh, pressure time or pressure distance relationship, as can be seen from the top graph. That's only going to be operating at a single frequency, obviously. What actually happens when you send out a pulse, as you can see from the lower example, is it actually going to get a range of frequencies that are going to be sent out. What we need to remember is that the shorter the pulse, the greater the number of frequencies that are going to be contained in there. Now this can become an issue because we're also going to try and remember that the shorter the pulse, the better the resolution. The pulse duration, we've said that the shorter the pulse, the greater the frequencies or the greater the bandwidth. That means that the pulse duration is going to be inversely proportional to the bandwidth. Shorten the length of the pulse, increase up the bandwidth. And that can be shown with this graph, where we can see that the longer bandwidth on the top has a smaller range of frequencies than the pulse on the bottom that has a greater range of frequencies. The way that we're drawing this is around a central frequency, which is known as sort of the operating frequency, if you like. And that's, you know, for instance, for uh, imaging probes like the abdominal probe that are operating at lower operating frequencies compared to a linear probe, for example, that's operating at higher frequencies. Although we describe maybe a single operating frequency that you're, uh, that you're transmitting the ultrasound at, what's actually happening is that you're getting a range of frequencies that are in there. We describe the fractional bandwidth this as being the bandwidth divided by this operative, operator frequency. And there's a certain quality factor that we describe, which is the operating frequency divided by the bandwidth. So why is all of this important? Well, it's important because ultrasound transducers have a limited bandwidth. If we're sending out transmitted pulses, which has a range of frequencies, we've then got to be able to process that range of frequencies when it's reflected. And if we say that the pulse duration is inversely proportional to the bandwidth, if we've got a limited range of the bandwidth, that means that we're going to have a limited uh, size to that pulse or a limited pulse duration. So that, for example, if the bandwidth is small, therefore the pulse has got to be longer, and that means resolution is then going to be affected. So again, there's going to be a kind of interplay between trying to keep the pulse as short as possible to get the best resolution we can, but to remember that we have to deal with a certain range of bandwidths. So we've got to have the bandwidth of a uh, the bandwidth has got to be a certain length to control for a certain bandwidth. So it's a bit of a, a play in between the two of them much the same as, say, something like image resolution compared to depth of penetration. Pulsed ultrasound is also important to try, and, uh, to try and determine what the depth of something is that you're imaging, which is obviously extremely important in ultrasound. And this is known as the pulsed echo principle. So if I were to send out an ultrasound pulse, and I was going to assume that that velocity of that ultrasound pulse through the tissues is going to be 1,540 meters per second. And I was going to calculate the time that it takes from when I send out that pulse 
for it to be reflected off a structure and reflected back and received. If I was to know that time and I was to know the speed, I could then work out the distance that it's traveled. And that's using that equation, distance equals speed times time. So if I move it around, I can say that, uh, for instance, time is equal to speed divided by distance, for example. It's important to remember when you're trying to calculate the distance traveled that we've got to account for the amount of time that the ultrasound wave takes to get to the reflector and then to come back. So it's going to be two times the distance to account for the reflection. So let's ask a question. So how much time does it take to image a structure at 10 centimeters? Well, remembering that distance equals speed times time. And remembering that we have to account for twice the distance because it's got to reach the reflector and come back. If we're trying to image, at, uh, image a structure at 10 centimeters, that's going to be equal to the speed, which is 1,540 meters per second, which is what the ultrasound machine assumes that the sound wave is traveling at. And we times that by the time, which we'll probably put in seconds to begin with, and we divide that by two. Again, there are different ways of doing this. I like to try and take out the, uh, to try and take out the uh, numerator and try and make it uniform. So I put 10 centimeters. I'll times that by two to account for the reflection. It's going to be equal to 154,000 centimeters per second. Try and put in the same units times by time. Obviously, instead of dealing with seconds, we're probably going to want to maybe decrease that down to bring it into microseconds, because that's the speed of uh, sound that it's going to be moving at. So we'll do 20 divided by 154,000 in centimeters is going to be equal to the time in seconds. And times that by uh, a million will give us it to us in microseconds. That gives us this 13 microseconds per centimeter. So to image a structure at 10 centimeters will take 130 microseconds. So it's important to try and remember this bog standard rule that 13 microseconds per centimeter is generally the amount of time that it takes an ultrasound wave to reach a reflected structure and come back. So in summary, the shorter the ultrasound pulse better the resolution. These ultrasound pulses that we use for B mode or M mode imaging, they have a certain length and they have a duration, just the same as uh, an ultrasound wave has a, uh, has a wavelength and a period. In terms of the pulses that get sent out, we have the duty factor, which is the amount of time that ultrasound is on and we spend the majority of the time listening for the ultrasound wave to be reflected. Trying to determine how many pulses in terms of both the transmission and the reception, that, both that time. If we consider that, we are going to get our pulse repetition frequency. And if we consider the time that that takes, we consider our pulse repetition period. And in terms of the duty factor, we remember that the ultrasound probe is transmitting ultrasound at only a fraction of the amount of time that's actually spent listening. The vast majority of time is spent listening for ultrasounds being returned. As well as the shorter the ultrasound pulse improving the resolution, the shorter the ultrasound pulse means the greater the bandwidth. And we try and remember that transducers have inherent bandwidth limitations, so there's going to be a trade-off between trying to make our pulses short so that we have the best resolution, but we've got to let the pulses be long enough so that we can limit our bandwidth, so that the, all the uh, received ultrasound frequencies can be processed. And that's it for the physical principles of the ultrasound section. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much.